everyone, relatively quick video. Um, I'm in the middle of some card making videos and um, and then in between I'm making some cards and I'm not filming because I'm making them from other people's channels. And I just thought I was going to paint some backdrops, some, some paper, I was going to paint it. This is just some scrap watercolour paper. And I was going to paint some paper and then do some die cutting from it tomorrow. And I thought about using these Twinkling H2Os, which is the... Uh, Passion set 28414 and I haven't actually used these or reviewed them yet so I thought well I'll do that, decide which ones I want to use if any um, in the project I plan to do. Now everyone's told me the same thing about these which really applies to all as far as I'm concerned metallic watercolours which is to um, spring, spray them with loads of water and leave them before you start working with them. Now, because they helpfully label them on the base, I'm just going to write down um, for my own benefit what the colours are. Otherwise that would be rather silly. They have very silly names. But that's the thing, when you get outside of the realm of artist watercolours, everything has a really silly name. So they come in little jars, and they are a cake, pretty much, of... Um, you can see that. They are pretty much a cake of colour within them. So I'm just going to mist each one, and I'm going to take them off to one side to do it, so that... I don't spray water on my paper and I'm just going to leave them now to do their thing. So it looks like these are poured rather than um, extruded, which is not a bad thing. I mean, it's similar to things like the Kurutaki Ganzai Tanbi watercolours, they are poured as well. Um, they're not very big pots, so they're probably quite expensive for what they are. They have a lot of mica in them, so it's pretty important to make sure they have had adequate time to rehydrate because otherwise you'll find it just impossible to get the twinkling part or shimmering part of the name to actually work what you'll find is that you will um, get the colour but not the um, not the shimmer because the, the mica particles are quite heavy and often take a bit of effort to rehydrate so the colours are Spice Pumpkin, which is red, Bamboo Heaven, which is green, Wine and Roses, which is a wonderful wine purple, Bolivian Blue, don't really know the significance of that, Cinnamon Stick, which is Cinnamon Stick coloured, and Hunter Grey, which is grey. Now, because these are metallic, and metallic colours always look better on black, I am going to prepare some black watercolour paper by using a Pro Marker, an alcohol marker, to just colour in some areas so that when I put each one onto the page I can try it on a black and a white background because that makes it so much easier doesn't it? Now I'm going to use um, quite a small brush I'm going to use a um, size 4 round sable just because that was the first one that came to hand and yeah these are rehydrating really easily actually um, I don't need to use a lot for testing these so I don't need to let them rehydrate much more. A tip with these kinds of things because they've got screw on lids is leave them to dry thoroughly before you put the lids on. So the first one is Spiced Pumpkin which I'm going to put onto white and black at the same time. You can see it's a gorgeous colour, it's got great coverage, there's a lot of colour in there. Now, I'm washing my brush in water and I'm then wiping it on a dried out baby wipe just to get rid of any mica that's on there because, you know, sable brushes should be respected and part of that is not, if they've got, mica won't damage your brushes but it can get into the ferrule and then you get it into other paints. So this is Bamboo Heaven, which is, wow, it's like green gold, it's that kind of green I'll bring these up to the camera so you can get a proper look at them 
once I've painted all of them out. I really am in love with Wine and Roses. That is the most amazing colour and incredibly festive as we're coming up to Christmas now. Um, could have its uses. Wow, so intense. Quite opaque, actually. Bolivian Blue next. This one's a little stickier. It seems to have swallowed the water. If you're like me and you don't change your paint water very often, because um, I have six jars in rotation at any point in time, it's important to only use mica-based colours in one jar of paint water so you can change it because what you don't want is mica getting into paintings where you don't want mica because you don't want sparkle where you don't want sparkle because that would be silly. This is cinnamon stick now. Wow, that's gorgeous. I think in answer to my original question, will I use these in this new painting? Yes. Um, I'm going to use Kurotaki Ganzai Tambi watercolours. I'm, I'm doing one of Christina Werner's um, cards, sort of. Um, something roughly based on it, which um, I'll link to in the iCards because, you know. And this is Hunter Grey, which is almost black. It's amazing. I'm just putting a lot of that out because I just want to see how thin I can get it to go. Hmm, interesting. Um, and and she, what she does in her video, which I will leave link to in the iCards with any luck, she uses Kurotaki Ganzai Tambi watercolours and she um, paints a whole sheet of watercolour paper, trims it down, cuts it to the size of her card front, embosses it to make it um, have texture and then stick some snowflakes on it. And I'm going to do something vaguely similar, which I won't film because it's a blatant rip-off of Christina's work and I wouldn't film that because obviously I profit from every video and I don't try and do derivative work if I can help it. Um, well, not too much anyway. That's not really very fair on the original artist, especially when she's just released it. You know, in a year I might, but not now. So, Spice Pumpkin, first of all, is this gorgeous orange-red. It's really very vivid, very, very red, not opaque at all, uh, but it looks good over black. I mean, let me let me take this page off, actually, so you can see it. And we'll fold it over so that you can... So Spice Pumpkin is this gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous colour. Lots of shimmer, especially on the black, so would be great for painting on black cardstock, but I love that red. This is Bamboo Heaven, which is this sort of green gold, which shimmer, and green gold is one of my favourite colours, so I love that. Absolutely love Wine and Roses. Fantastic purple. Really gorgeous. Bolivian Blue. Again, amazing. The shimmer in these is so consistent and so everywhere and uniform. Cinnamon stick, which is a little bit insipid actually, but I don't dislike it. And then Hunter Grey, which is actually like a, a gunmetal with this wonderful sheen. It doesn't look so good over black, it just looks like glitter on a black background, but it's really impressive. I like those. Um, they're in weird colours, they're all in kind of secondaries, so I don't think you could honestly mix these. Um, we could have a try, I suppose. Um, I can probably mix um, the blue and the red. They're probably the only ones that are likely to mix because the others are all just going to give mud. So let's just try that. Putting out some Spice Pumpkin, which is this. It's a very warm red. It's a very, very orange red. Oh dear, I forgot to refocus you. I'm sorry. There you go. And I'm going to put a little bit of the Bolivian blue just next to it and then uh, and which is a very 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 um it's a quite a neutral blue it's quite a gray blue and i'm going to mix the two together we won't get purple we'll get something muddy yeah we get brown they're too far apart they're not close enough to really mix properly 
it may be that the green gold might mix with the blue. Yeah, you can kind of mix that, those two. Those two do mix quite well to make a kind of teal. Again, it's muddy though. You know, these are not designed for mixing. It, it is a teal, but it's a very muddy teal compared to that brown we gained up there. But that's not an unpleasant brown. You know, you could find a use for that. So I'm probably going to use these a little bit in um, making these backgrounds that I want to make. But what I'm going to do, unlike Christina's video, is she did um, a whole sheet and then she did, I cut it in half and then die cut from one half and not the other. What I'm going to do is make the whole sheet, die cut, and then I'm going to go over the snowflakes or whatever I cut using these to add some shimmer. So do I like them? Yes. Um, are they going to be useful? Um, probably only for doing seasonal stuff. I can't see myself using these in fine art at all. You don't get a lot of them. Um, which is obviously a criticism. Um, I think they probably last a long time. I think they probably go a long way. They're not the kind of thing you could paint a painting with. They are really a craft watercolour that is designed for card making. You could probably stamp with them. They're thin enough. Um, they don't look as impressive on a black background as I'd hoped. A lot of shimmery paints look great on a black background. These look great on a white background, so I'm going to stick with that. They kind of remind me a little bit of the Prima watercolour confections watercolours, which are pretty um, generic, um, but I like them, you know, I don't have a problem with them. Um, the Prima ones, just so you know, uh, are uh, just a sort of general craft grade watercolour, but they're pretty good. I like them a lot. These are a similar consistency, they're quite thick, they're quite viscous. Um, and that wonderful shimmer in there is really nice. But the difference really being the Primal ones look amazing on black backgrounds. These look amazing on a white background because these have just got so much more mica in them. So that's my little review of the Twinkling H2O's set, um, which is called Passion. They do lots of sets. And they're made by Splash of Colour, which is the website is www.splashofcolour.us. And they're based in Huntington Beach, California made in China. So if that's important to you to not buy goods fabricated in China, which is really hard to do these days, um, might be one to avoid. But, um, you know, I personally do avoid certain countries on human rights grounds as much as I can. China are really hard to avoid because so much is manufactured there these days. But that might be something to consider if you're thinking of buying them. But on the whole, I like them. They're a nice craft watercolour. The shimmer is nice. It probably isn't that useful except doing seasonal stuff or maybe for making embellishments with. But, you know, there's worth products out there. I think they're pretty good. Um, value for money, difficult. You know, those sets are about £10-£12, which is about £15-$16 um, if you buy them in the UK. I think they're probably not worth that. I got those for like £6 because I got them in the sale. Um, I think that's the the only thing I can say about them is if you're going to buy them, buy them discounted. They're really not worth the full price. Thanks very much. Bye-bye.